History of Play would like to welcome you to a special performance of World War Women, which features the unsung heroines of World War II. Please note, no video recording nor reproduction of this performance is permitted. Adventure into the stories of the unknown, as History of Play embodies the spirit of women who risked their lives to defeat fascism in World War II. World War Women is a suspenseful reliving of the triumphs and terrors of our greatest heroines. The program is made possible due to the generosity of the Bob Jolly Charitable Trust. With the 2017 world premiere, World War Women has been featured in the Associated Press and helped to raise nearly $10,000 for the nonprofit organization Honor Flight, which provides war veterans with an all-expense paid trip to Washington, D.C. The Associated Press states, History of Play is drawn to characters who seem conflicted about society's gender roles. Calahora not only portrays these women, she emulates them in life, starting her own company to educate audiences about influential and often forgotten women. Founded by Judith Calahora in 2010, History of Play is an internationally renowned educational entertainment troupe. Judith is a professional actress, writer, living historian, and educator. She graduated with a Bachelor of Fine Arts from Syracuse University and completed the Globe Education Program at Shakespeare's Globe Theatre of London. To learn where to see History at Play perform, follow their socials using the handle History at Play and visit historyatplay.com. And now, we invite you to enjoy World War Women, the unsung heroines of World War II. trainers. But now all we got are Taylor Crafts and Piper Cubs and Erica's. And then finally the P-19s arrive. <laughs> than that. What do you mean the plane crashed and burned? Was it mechanical failure? Was it pilot error? Come on, you gotta give us more than that. There's a girl in my bunk. She knows what happened. I can tell she knows what happened and she won't 
say a word. It's like she prefers to mourn in silence. And then suddenly, I start to realize Jackie Cochran knows us better than that. She selected us because she knows how we will respond in situations like this. Jackie knows how we will face terror, how it will strengthen us. There's a girl in my bunk. Her name is Lorraine Rogers. She was flying the BT-13 and she was having mechanical failure. And when you fly that thing, we call it the vaulty vibrator because the thing shakes so hard while you're, while you're flying it. And she had control failure and she was on her back and she was low to the ground and somehow Lorraine Rogers, she got out of that BT-13 and she got her chute open. And you know what happened when she got back to the hangar? Her commanding officer told her, it's impossible to get out of the BT-13 upside down. He blamed her for leaving the airplane. It is possible to get out of the BT-13 upside down. It's just that no one had ever done it before. And then, then there were the maintenance crews. Pam Davis, North Carolina, artillery camp. I've selected my best girl to show the Army Air Force that the wasps are capable of doing more than just burying planes. They are capable of performing in the most dangerous missions. No matter what happens on these missions, ladies, your performance here is crucial. It will affect the future standing of wasps and women pilots everywhere. So no matter what happens, I must have a vow of secrecy from you all. You must never tell. Never tell? Never tell that Camp Davis? It's a disaster. I, along with another wasp, we're sent to replace two wasps who died in crashes. Even Jackie Cochran thinks it's sabotage. And I, I understand. I know that we are dealing with combat reject airplanes, and I understand that there is always a shortage of replacement parts, especially during a time of war, but those girls died. They died because they were murdered. When they examined one of the airplanes, it had crashed on its back on the runway. When they examined that airplane, do you know what they found in the gas tank? Sugar. They found sugar in the gas tank, which had stopped up the engine. Some of the other planes that crashed, they found rags and cloth jammed into their gas tanks. Those girls died because they were murdered. And Jackie Cochran, she came down here from Washington, D.C. We confronted her. We made her promise that she would look into it. Even she thinks it's sabotage. We made her promise. And then, nothing. She goes back to Washington, D.C. Jackie Cochran can't bear the thought of losing her WASP program. Stop. Stop it! They don't play that for us. We're civilians. We are not members of the Army Air Force. 
They don't play that song at our funerals. They don't pay to send those girls' bodies back home to their families. They don't let us drape the American flag over their coffins. We pass the hat. We collect donations and money for those girls' families. We pay to send those girls' bodies back home to their families. And we drape the American flag over their coffins anyway. They're never gonna stop the wasps from flying. You're never gonna stop us from getting back in those airplanes. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Ann Baumgartner, and I am a WASP, a woman Air Force Service pilot. I'd like to take a moment and grab a sip of water, and I'd love you all to think of a, a few questions so that I can answer them for you truthfully, honestly, and in the moment right now. Thank you very much for joining us and for being with us on the Happen Chat today. I'll be right back. find out a little bit about what you are thinking today and what your questions are. So let's open this up here and let it populate. Sorry, I had to cut us off before. My uh, apparatus was not in the proper mode. It was not in airplane mode, which is really quite ironic since I fly airplanes. So let's go for it. My phone is taking a second. All right, here we are. That's very bright light. Oh, good. We've got lots of questions. Excellent. Let's see if we can put these lights down a little bit so I don't look like a ghost. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Just down a little. All right. Wonderful. Okay. It's a little too bright. <laughs> So, <laughs> I love how Mackenzie says, hi, Sandy, and then hi, Nana, and then hi, Coco. <laughs> All right, 
What made me want to join? So first of all, Kathy, um, Kathy Lamondo America has asked what made me want to join the WAAC. Now this is a different, a different branch. So the um, the WASPs, the Woman Air Force Service Pilots, um, which is represented by the Fifi Nella, which I think you can also see on this. Uh, we are in charge of combat training missions, and we also ferry officers from one Air Force base or one Army base or one um, military base to another across the United States. So, for example, I fly missions where I do um, uh, maneuvers, very, very uh, complicated aerial maneuvers, figure eights. Um, sharp dives, and while I do that, the gunner trainees are actually trying to fire at my airplane. Usually it's a Douglas Dauntless or a P-51 Mustang, or at first we were flying the P-19s, which were open cockpit, and they're actually trying to aim for a cloth that is tied to the tail of my airplane and while I'm flying my airplane, they are shooting at this cloth. Some of these boys have never shot artillery in their entire lives. So if, as you can imagine, when I get back to the, air, the uh, tarmac, usually my airplane is riddled with bullet holes. And I just hope one of them doesn't go through the cockpit and land in my chest. Uh, so far, so good. Now, um, we also do uh, uh, combat training where we will do a really complicated maneuvers such as figure eights as I mentioned and then the folks on the ground has to have to follow us with their searchlights and then um, additionally because I was shown to have greater uh, fluency with uh, picking up airplanes um, new airplanes I'm able to fly them really easily I don't need a whole lot of training um, I'm, I'm very a very quick learner when it comes to new aircraft um, I was actually transferred to Wright Field, um, the, so the Wright Brothers, uh, named after the Wright Brothers in Dayton, Ohio, and I was actually part of the FFT. The FFT is a fight or flight training, um, fight or flight trust testing, pardon me. So fight or flight testing means that I was the only wasp, I was the only woman selected to test experimental airplanes. And I am the first woman, you can't tell anyone this because Germany doesn't know that we have this type of airplane yet. So please, whatever I say right now, this is, this is confidential intelligence. I flew the very first jet plane and, and we put a propeller on it, a false propeller on it when it's on the runway and on the tarmac. So if the Germans are spying on us, they think it's a propeller plane but it's got a jet engine. It's amazing. So I'm, I'm really proud. I'm hoping that I'm gonna uh, break the sound barrier. When I was flying the other day, I was looking out the side of the cockpit and I could see the sound wave. It's actually a, a, vis a visible wave that occurs in the air when you go to a certain speed and you're just about to break the sound barrier and you can actually see the sound visually like a wave hitting the airplane, hitting the wing of the airplane. It's abs it's phenomenal. I'm so lucky that I'm in the fight or flight test trip, the test group. So uh, let's see. So Kathy, the difference is you're thinking about the, um, the branch that is run by Nancy Harkness Love who's in, uh, uh, from Boston. Uh, Jackie Cochran, who's my commander, is from Florida. Uh, Nancy Harkness Love's group, the, those girls, uh, they're all commercial pilots. We're, uh, most of us, we have our private licenses, commercial licenses, you need uh, more hours of, uh, more hours logged in your flight book. So with the other branch, what they do is they're actually um, ferrying airplanes. So they're ferrying large airplanes like uh, bombers, <clears throat> um, flying fortresses. They are uh, ferrying them from one base to another, sometimes overseas, but not to Europe. It might be overseas to another American territory. Um, but we fly solely within the continental United States. But they might have us flying back and forth across the United States um, many times. I had to do a bunch of trainings um, where I was actually flying this dummy load. It weighed almost 9,000 pounds and it was nearly 9 feet long by 28 inches wide. 
and um, we had to fly that thing back and forth across the United States of America. The amount of time we were in the air, we could have flown all the way to Tokyo. So I have no idea what could possibly be uh, nine feet long and 28 inches wide and weigh nearly 9,000 pounds that we have to fly all the way to Tokyo. But we gotta fly that thing back and forth. And let me just tell you, it is excruciating and boring to be up in an airplane flying for that long with no particular destination in mind. So I have no idea what the United States has in store with a dummy load that's nearly 9,000 pounds and you know nine feet long and 28 inches wide. It seems ridiculous. Anyway, so um, maybe you have a better idea what it, what what we're what the dummy load is representing. So when did I learn to fly? I was actually working in, Uni in uh, New York City in Manhattan. I am, um, by trade, I'm a scientist. I am actually, I work in a lab. And I went out during my lunch break uh, in Manhattan to the top of the skyscraper where I was working and I, I saw an airplane fly overhead in New York in the middle of the day and I quit my job. <laughs> I did, I quit my job. I'm fortunate, I come from a family that um, I had the means. My father works with Poland Springs water and uh, I had the means to be able to support a, a very expensive hobby, which is flight. And so um, it was just that one day I, I went out to lunch on the roof of the building in Manhattan and I said, I don't wanna work in a lab, I wanna work up there. And after that, I was just, I was hooked on it. I wanted to fly an air ambulance, but now I'm flying, fly, I'm flying fighter planes. So it's really a dream come true. Uh, so uh, I learned to fly in, I, I, I live in a couple places as I grew up. I lived in Massachusetts, but as an adult, I lived in New York. So I was learning to fly in, there, in New York. <clears throat> Why would I want to continue as a wasp, a wasp? In lieu of sabotage, I think you're thinking of another person. World War Women is a show that actually depicts five different women's stories. So I think you're thinking of uh, a woman I know who's uh, in sabotage, whose name is Virginia Hall. My name is Ann Baumgartner, so uh, we're different people. Um, when did the government begin paying for the remains to be flown home? The government never paid for the remains of our fellow wasps to be flown home. There were 35 wasps that died throughout the course of the war, and we paid for them all to be flown home, all of them. The government never paid for any of us. The government never paid us a cent for serving. We knew when we signed up that we were signing up as civilians, we were signing up as volunteers, but we didn't get anything. We didn't get the GI Bill. We don't get any military honors. Most people don't even know that we exist. I'm going to take one more question as Anne, and then I'll switch to my alter ego. Um, I'll take that question when I switch to my alter ego. <laughs> Do the wasps fly only in the States? Gene Harmon, yes. We only fly over the, uh, the, trans the um, continental United States, yes. The, the wasps the, and the, the wax, pardon me, um, the wasps are over in England. They'll fly overseas, they'll ferry airplanes overseas, they're commercial airliner pilots. Uh, we're private licensed pilots. We fly over the, the, the continental United States. The Germans are listening. I'm glad, it's true, it's true. <laughs> Um, where was I born? I was born in Massachusetts. I actually went to um, a school called Walnut Hill, which is uh, still a school in operation today, as far as I know. And on that note, I'll switch to my alter ego. Thank you again for joining me. I'm so, so sorry that we lost the live feed. Um, it was true. I didn't have my phone on airplane mode, which is really the biggest irony of it all. Um, and I realized if my phone is not on airplane mode and I get a phone call, you stop being able to hear me and see me and the screen freezes up. So I wanted to make sure that that didn't happen. Um, my name is Judith Kalaora. I'm the artistic director and founder of History at Play. We are uh, a, an educational entertainment troupe that does in traditional uh, immersive theater performances and also live stream productions in the era of isolation and quarantine. Um, World War Women is our only program that depicts more than one woman. So there's actually five women's stories in this one performance. So um, I'm gonna be doing this performance full length as a paper hap, not this Friday, but next Friday. I'm announcing it to you folks first. So you got the, 
the, the scoop way ahead of the rest of the game. So if you want to see uh, Jackie Cochran, uh, Anne Baumgartner, which is who I'm portraying today, the pilot. Jackie was an incredible pilot as well. She is the first woman to break the speed of sound. Um, uh, uh, Vera Atkins, the head of the special operations executive, and who you saw last week for the Happen Chat was Virginia Hall. She was a spy for the British as well as for the Americans at various points during the war. And um, J uh, Jane Fawcett was a Bletchley Park radio operator who was uh, helping to descramble the German Enigma machine, which was the machine that the Nazis were using to um, cipher their messages so that they couldn't be decoded by the, um, by the Allies. So um, that is a program that is very complex. It's very fast moving. We'll be doing some, uh, we'll have to do it on Zoom because you'll, be able, you'll need to be, see two screens at the same time. So if you prefer Facebook or if you prefer Zoom, just let me know when you sign up, when you, um, when you pay uh, $5 to $25 per person or some of you have purchased a season pass, a 2020 annual pass, thank you very much. If you prefer Zoom, just shoot me an email, judith at historyatplay.com or direct message me here and I'll give you the Zoom link, okay? It'll be on Facebook Live and on the Paper Hat group and it will be on um, Zoom. That's not this Friday, but next Friday. So now the questions that um, are more contemporary in nature, let's have a look here. Put this down. All right, so we got, this is very, this is like in my face. Let's turn that off, okay. So, yeah, so um, Susan, Sue, Sue Johnson, I actually really wanna address your question about when did the army start paying for these women? Uh, not only did the army never recognize the WASPs as actual members of the Army Air Force, but it wasn't until Jimmy Carter's presidency in the 70s that they actually, um, late 70s, they actually retroactively made the WASPs members of the Air Force. And then... That's not even the, when it finally became, you know, kind of pseudo equal. It was Barack Obama, President Obama, that signed the law, the bill that allowed wasps to be buried in Arlington Cemetery. So can you imagine these women had served their country, 35 of them died in pl plane crashes, some of which were definitely sabotage. And uh, due to the maintenance, the maintenance crews were really upset. They felt like they had been um, relegated to what was sort of reject work. Um, they felt like working to maintain the airplanes that were being flown by women instead of being flown by combat fighters was a demotion. And some of the girls were not friendly to the maintenance crews. And Anne Baumgartner specifically left Avenger Field in Sweetwater, Texas, because she didn't like the way the other wasps were really, um, they were really kind of like a, what's the word that I'm looking for? They were like hoity-toity. They were like very much in their little um, posse together and they didn't befriend the maintenance crews. And Anne Baumgartner realized the only people that are keeping her alive are the maintenance crews. So they were her best friends. And when she went to Wright Field in Dayton, Ohio, um, she, the other wasp left, the other wasp hated it, but she loved being around, you know, real, uh, real crews that were, they had camaraderie. They weren't like a, a clique or anything. They were really supportive of one another. She was the only woman there. Um, and there was no, there were no posses. There were no, uh, catty behavior. So, you know, in some sense, the women were, they stuck together to support themselves. They stuck together for strength but it ended up kind of you know, shooting themselves in the foot because the maintenance crews really didn't want to be there. They didn't want to be working on those girls' airplanes. So um, yeah, so Jimmy Carter retroactively makes them into actual enlisted um, members of the Air Force and then Barack Obama allows their bodies to be buried in Arlington National Cemetery. How did I come across her story from Libby Cardi McNamee? McNamee, I'm not sure, but one of those ways hopefully is right. Um, she is the only wasp who, who wrote a full autobiography. So a lot of wasps, they wrote articles. 
about um, their experiences. And those articles were usually printed in magazines or newspapers. But Ann Baumgartner wrote a full, uh, a full book. I'll actually grab it for you so that you can see it. And hold, hold tight one second. I'm coming back. I promise. Squeezing through here. All right. Um, so it's called A Wasp Among Eagles. And um, she's a wonderful, wonderful writer. And you can hear her voice. You can hear her, like, enthusiasm. You can hear her energy. And you can hear her personality in her book. So for me, as, a, as an actress, it's important for me to have a, a person's own words whenever possible. From which to from which to create the script, and in this case, I was literally had a whole book that I could quote from, and she wrote it herself. So her name is Ann B. Carl, Ann Baumgartner Carl. She actually married a guy who also worked for the Army Air Force as a flight engineer, and then he went on to work for NASA. So she stayed involved in the aeronautical industry for her whole life, really. But she actually never flew again. She never personally flew after World War II had ended, which is really quite amazing. Some of these women went on to fly for the rest of their lives, and some of them just hung up their goggles and gloves, and that was it. They called it a day. I definitely recommend